All praises to the Most High. So, brothers and sisters, all praise to the Lord. Um, APP to Pentecost 2022. All praise to the Most High. So, some of you, it's the first time that you're observing the Feast of Pentecost. All praises to the Lord. Um, so, let's open up with the book. Give me the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Let's start there. Come on. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. You see what he's saying? He says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Remember the law of Moses. So we must always remember the laws of Moses. This is the last book of the Old Testament. The Most High God is commanding us, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. We're going to go into the laws of Moses that the Most High God used them to teach us those laws. Read that again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Read. Which I commanded unto him in horror for all mm. Israel. Come on. With my statutes and judgments. You see that? With my statutes and judgments. So the Most High God commanded us what? The law through Moses. Give me that in Deuteronomy 5 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 1. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 5, verse 1. Read. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, mm -hmm. Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day. Read. That ye may learn them and keep them and do them. You see that thing? That ye may learn, keep, and do his statutes and judgments. Go ahead. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in horror. You see that? The Lord our God made a covenant with us. Who's us? The Israelites. He made a covenant with us in Horeb. Read. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, mm -hmm. but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. You see that thing? Who are here? We are, who says what? Who are, who are all of us here alive this day? 2022. Guess what? They say the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers back then is the same covenant that we're supposed to observe this day. The old and new covenant. You understand? And both, guess what? We are under the new covenant now under Jesus the Christ. But we must understand the laws that the most that God gave unto us. You understand? Get that in the book of Judges. Okay? Judges 5 verse 11. Judges chapter 5 verse 11. Because you know what? Before you get there, get Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 1. Deuteronomy 27 verse 1. Let's read there. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 1. Go ahead. And Moses with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, mm -hmm. Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. What did he say? Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. He said, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. The same commandments that he, he, he gave to Moses to give to the 70 elders and all that, and the rest of the leaders of Israel and all the women and children, guess what? Those same laws is the same laws we're supposed to observe, to observe this day. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me Deuteronomy 6 verse 1. You know what? Give me Deuteronomy 31. Before we go to Deuteronomy 6, give me Deuteronomy 31. Start at verse, start at verse 9. Deuteronomy 31 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 9. Go ahead. And Moses wrote this law mm -hmm. and delivered it unto the priests the sons of Levi, Read. which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto all the elders of Israel. You see that thing? He, he says he, the, 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 the priests, the Levites, they were looking after the ark of the covenant. You understand? He says not only that, you had what? You had the elders of Israel which the Lord of God was delivered unto. You understand? And guess what? We always had leadership from back then until this day. You understand? So a lot of the times, our people in this day, we've been conditioned to hate law and order and structure. And guess what? If you don't hate, if you hate law and order and structure, you cannot be in Israel. You will not be able to survive. Why? Because our people, we hate law and order. Guess what? When you come into this truth, that's when you begin to learn. You must understand. You must adhere to law and order and structure and instruction and counsel. And apply the counsel that you are given. Okay? As the most High God commanded God and the elders back then. So it is today. Okay? Now read verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 12. 
Go ahead. Gather the people together. Mm -hmm. Men and women and children. You see that? Men, women, and children. It says gather the people together. Men, women, and children. This is about the nation. Okay, go ahead. And the stranger that is within the gates. And the stranger that is in the gate, that's going into what? That's going into Leviticus chapter 19. Okay. Go ahead. That they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this law. And observe to do all the words of this law. That is what we're supposed to do this day. Go ahead. Watch this. Come on. And that their children, which have not known anything. You see that? That they are children which have not known anything because it's the responsibility of the man which is goes into the fathers, the leaders, you understand, the pillars of our nation, the women that support the men, support the truth, you understand, so that they can what? They can make the laws of God known to their children at the command of the father. Go ahead. May hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land whither you go over Jordan to possess it. You see that thing? Give me that in Deuteronomy 6 now, verse 1. Because these laws, when these laws that are written in this book, we must make them known to our children. The feast day, the high holy day, we must make them known to their children. To hell with Christmas, to hell with Mother's Day, to hell with Father's Day, to hell with um, Valentine's Day, to hell with them days. Okay? We must keep the high holy day that the Lord gave unto us. Read that, Deuteronomy 6, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Mm -hmm. That ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Read. That thou mightest fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and mm -hmm. his commandments which I commanded thee. Read. Thou and thy son mm. and thy son's son. You see that? That's the children. Thou, thy son, thy son's son. You see that even your grandchildren must know these laws. Go ahead. All the days of thy life. All the days of thy life. Come on. And that thy days may be prolonged. That your days may be prolonged. Read on. Hear therefore, o Israel, and observe to do it. Mm -hmm. That it may be well with thee. Read. And that ye may increase mightily. As the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. The promised land. The land that flows with milk and honey. That's the promised land. The land of Israel. The land of Jerusalem. Okay, come on. Verse 4. Read. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. Read. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. And with all thy soul. And mm. with all thy might. Come on. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. You see that thing? Are these words that I command you this day shall be in thine heart, in your mind. And if they are in your mind, you will apply to do them as the most that God commanded. Go ahead. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You see that thing? We shall teach these laws diligently unto our children. Come on. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you are sitting in the house, you teach the children the laws of the Most High God. Come on. And when thou walkest by the way. When you are on the street, walkest by the way, read. And when thou liest down. And when thou liest down, when you go to sleep, come on. And when thou risest up. You see that thing? So this is the commandment that was given to all Israel. Men, women, and children. That we may observe them forever. You understand? So, so it is today. We must still do the same thing. Because why? The most that God gave us this law. He gave us this Bible so that we can live by it, you understand, and glorify him on earth. Now watch this. Give me the book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Because in the land of our captivity, the guess what? The most that God, because we are no longer in, the, in, in our homeland no more, we are in the land of our captivity because we broke the commandment. Guess what? Even in the land of our captivity, we are commanded to observe God's commandments. His high holy days. Okay? Read that. Judges 5 verse 11. The book of Judges chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of arches okay. in the places of drawing water. So now it says, they that are delivered from the noise of arches. An archer is talking about, an archer is, is this is not talking about a regular bow and arrow. 
because it's just the noise of archer. And archer don't make noise. So this is going into what uh, is talking about a mixer, a nuclear mixer, nuclear bombs. Okay. So he's prophesying about the last days also. You understand? Because in the last days, the nations will have the type of technology that will work, that will go boom. Okay, same with nuclear weapons. Go ahead. In the places of drawing water. In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water is making reference to the land of our captivity, the land of our slavery, because in the place, places of drawing water, slaves, they draw water for who? For those that, are, that, are, that, are, that have been captured. You understand? So that's what we're doing today. We are drawing what drawers of water and viewers of wood for these nations. You understand? Because of what? Because of our sins. Come on. They shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. He says, there in the land of our captivity, in the places of growing water, he says, we shall rehearse the righteous acts of our Lord, meaning keep the commandments of the Most High God, including the high holidays. Go ahead. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. You see that thing? Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates, the gates of Jerusalem, when we return back to our homeland. Give me that in Titus 2 verse 11. Because we still suppose the same thing that we read in Judges is the same thing that the Apostle Paul said. Read that, Titus 2 verse 11. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace of God, that when Christ died on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel. That is the grace of um, the Most High God. By sending his son down to die for us. Go ahead. Teaching us that. Mm -hmm. Denying ungodliness. So grace, and the grace of, hold on. The grace of our Lord will teach us to deny ungodliness. Because the grace of our Lord gives us an opportunity for us to get our minds right before the Lord returns. You understand? Go ahead. And worldly lust. Worldly lust, read. Really? We should live soberly. So now, hold on. Grace teaches us to live soberly. Guess what? Grace is a commandment. Grace is a commandment that commands us to live right soberly. You understand? To deny worldly lusts. Grace is a commandment. Understand that. Read. Righteously. Righteously. Grace commands us to live righteously. Go ahead. And godly. Mm -hmm. In this present world. You see that part right there? In this present world. In this present world. Rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. When? In this present world. So he's saying the same thing right there. Understand that thing. So now, give me the book of Exodus. Okay? Give me Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I'm going to show you something this day. Exodus 20, verse 8. Because this is part of the Ten Commandments. In the Ten Commandments, we're going to read about the feast days. So what the feast that we're, we're, we're going to read here constitute all the feast days that the Most High God has written in this book. Read what you got. Exodus 20 verse 8. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is the first high day that the Lord gave unto us. And guess what? So, But guess what? This law that we're reading here with the law of the Sabbath constitute all the high days that the Most High God commanded and to all Israel to keep it. So if you want to read about the high holy day, where is it found in the Ten Commandments? We are reading about it here. You read about the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, which we are observing now, the Feast of First Fruits, which is the same one, the Feast of the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets. You understand? It all falls under this law that we are reading right here. Read again, verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Come on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Come on. In it thou shalt not do any work. Read. Really? Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. You notice here it says, it says you, your son or your daughter, your main, your men and maid servants says they must all observe the Sabbath day. That's the same thing we read in Exodus in Deuteronomy 31. It says, gather, gather the people together, men, women, and children, because that's what we're reading here. So men, women, and children, guess what? On the high days, we're supposed to gather together as part of the law. 
Go ahead. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, mm -hmm. the sea, and all that in them is. Come on. And rested the seventh day. Read. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You see that thing? The most high God, he blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. He made it holy, separate. Give me Sarah 33 verse 7. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 7. Therefore, the, the Lord made the seventh day, the Lord made the seventh day and hallowed it. Watch this. Sarah 33, verse 7. Come on, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 7. Read. Why doth one day excel another? Mm -hmm. When as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun. So he said, why does one day excel another? Why, the, why, why are some days more excellent than others? You understand? Because all the days are determined by the sun. Watch this. Go ahead. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished. By the laws of God, they were separate. They were distinguished. You understand? Some days were, more, were made more excellent than others. So all the days are not equal. They are not the same. Some are better than, some are more excellent than others. Go ahead. And he altered seasons and feasts. He altered seasons and feasts by the knowledge of the Most High God to make some days more excellent than others. Come on. Some of them hath he made high days. You and see that thing? That's why it made them, it, it makes some days more excellent than others. It says some of them have he made high days and he hallowed them. Just like we read in Exodus 20, verse 11. Some of them, he made high days and hallowed them. He made them all. He made them separate from other ordinary days. Go ahead. And some of them, hath he made ordinary days. You see that some of them, he made ordinary days. So the day of Pentecost is not an ordinary day. It's a high day that the Most High God hallowed, made it separate. Okay. Give me Leviticus 23 now, verse 1. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the first verse. Let's start there. So when you want to know about the feast of the Most High God, you read about, you, you read many of them. If, not all of them, but majority of them, you're going to find them in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Okay, let's read them. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Pray. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the feast of the Lord. So, guess what? We are, we, are, we, are, we are here about to read the feast of the law. You understand? Go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. You see that? So in the feast of the Lord, the most that God says, it must be a holy convocation. We must gather ourselves together. A holy gathering. That's what a holy convocation is. It's a law. Read. Even these are my feasts. Even these are my feasts. Jump down to verse 9. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 9. You know what? I'm going to show you something. Read verse 3. Read verse, read verse 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 3. Come on. Six days shall work be done. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You see that? So notice here, in the feast of the Lord, we're reading about the Sabbath day. So in Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11, we read about the Sabbath day. Guess what? The Sabbath day is part of the feast of the law. And guess what? In Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, is not just the Sabbath day. It's all other high days that the Lord gave unto us. I want you men and women to understand that. So when you want to find um, the, the feast of, of tabernacle, guess what? In the Ten Commandments, guess what? Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, guess what? The feast of tabernacle falls under that. You understand? The Feast of Pentecost falls under that. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, it falls under that. The New Moon, it falls under that. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 3. Read. Six days shall work be done, mm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and Read. holy convocation. Come on. Ye shall do no work therein. Mm. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. In all your dwellings. In all your dwellings. Wherever we are scattered, guess what? We are commanded to gather ourselves together on the high day, you understand? And guess what? And on a regular basis. Jump down to verse 9. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, 
when he become into the land which when he I give, when he become into the land when he become into the land the land that the Lord promised unto our forefathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob this is the land of that flower with milk and honey go ahead which I give unto you mm -hmm. and shall reap the harvest thereof you shall what and shall reap the harvest thereof and we shall reap the harvest thereof. Guess what? We reap the harvest from the land. You understand? The land that we worked on, the land that the Lord has blessed, so we can reap the harvest. Okay, go ahead. Then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. He says, You shall bring the, the what? He said, You shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests, the Levites. Watch this. Let's understand what is the definition of harvest. Okay, let's get the definition of harvest real quick. Okay, let me share my screen. One second, bear with me. Uh, you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. The definition of harvest from wikipedia.org. Come on. Harvesting is the process of gathering a ripe crop from the fields. Read that again. Harvesting is the process of gathering a ripe crop from the fields. You see that? It says harvesting is the process of gathering a ripe, a ripe, a ripe crop from the field. Okay, go ahead. Reaping is the cutting of grain or pulse for harvest. You see that? It says reaping is the cutting of grain or pulse for harvest. Right? Typically, using a sieve. Sickle or reaper. So now reaping, that's when you go into the field. Now you're cutting the grain. You understand for harvest. This is this reaping, that's when you cut using instruments. So it's, this is an instrument, is a is a is a farming instrument, okay? For reaping purposes. A sickle and a reaper as well. Go ahead. On smaller farms with minimal mechanization, harvesting is the most labor-intensive activity of the growing season. You see that thing is harvesting is the most labor intensive activity of the growing season. Guess what? Um, those of us that grew up in the boondoos, we used to do that a lot for maize, for beans, okay, uh, for watermelon, um, for yeah, maize, watermelon, and beans, especially beans, also, they are very labor intensive. Okay, read on. On large mechanized farms. Harvesting uses the most expensive and sophisticated farm machinery, mm -hmm. such as the combined harvester. That's the harvester right there, something like that. You see that? Go ahead. Process autom automation has increased the efficiency of both the seeding and harvesting processes. Mm -hmm. Specialized harvesting equipment utilizing conveyor belts to mimic gentle rip gripping and mass transport replaces the manual task of removing each seedling by hand. You see that? Because that's what we were doing in the land. We didn't have these. In Jerusalem, we didn't have these. So guess what? We, were, we would all go to the field and be doing all this. You understand? With our children and so forth. I know, I mean, in the booth, my mother's still doing that. Because especially, let's say, for uh, Morocco and things like that, whenever there's Morocco season, she will, we will go into the into the into the into the farm and we will be picking it all day. We'll be filling the plastic bag and all of that stuff. And then we go back, we wash it, it gets cooked, it gets dried, it puts on the sun, gets dried, then it's packed away. For what? For winter. So when winter comes, there's food throughout the winter. There was no, we didn't have lack. You understand? In captivity, we did that thing. Now read that. The completion of harvesting marks the end of the growing season or the growing cycle for a particular crop. It says the completion of harvesting marks the end of the growing season. The end of that season, okay, or the growing cycle for a particular crop. We're going to go into that. Green on, the social what? And the social importance of this event makes it the focus of seasonal celebrations uh -huh. such as harvest festivals found in many religions. You see that thing? It says what? It says the social importance of this event makes it, it is, makes it the focus of seasonal celebrations such as harvest festivals 
found in many religions. Harvest festivals. Harvest festivals. Okay? So, we are, we are having a harvest festival right now. You understand? In the spirit of the Lord. Um, okay. Read that again. Leviticus 23. Read verse 10 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 10. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, mm -hmm. and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest into the priest. So now it says, there is a, We shall reap the harvest thereof. So we need to know during the Feast of Pentecost, what crop were we harvesting? Which month, the, at the end, which is the end of the reaping cycle, you understand? Which we have, we have to celebrate that because the Lord blessed us, you understand? So now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 30. Exodus chapter 9, verse 30. We need to understand the crop that was being harvested during that time. We're going to go into that. So pay close attention. Read that in Exodus 9. The book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 30. Come on. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that you will not fear the Lord God. Come on. And the flax and the body was smitten. Now remember, this is during the time when the most High God was judging the Egyptians. He was plaguing them. He was destroying the Egyptians for our sake. He says the flax and the body was smitten by what? The, by the hail. Because the most High God, he, he brought hail upon the, the, the Egyptians. He destroyed their crops and so forth. Okay, come on. For the body was in the ear. Uh -huh. And the flax was bald. He says the body was in the ear and the flax was bald. Watch this. Go ahead. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten. Stop right there. But the what? But the wheat and the rye were not smitten. But the wheat and the rye, they were not smitten. The wheat, pay, pay close attention to that. But the wheat and the rye, they were not smitten. Come on. For they were not grown up. Because they were not grown up yet. They were not grown up yet. Give me that in Exodus 23. Exodus 23 verse 14. Okay. The book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 14. Read. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. So three times a year we must keep the specific feast that the Lord is going to list unto us. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread, that's one of the feasts. The feast of unleavened bread is also called the feast of the Passover. Hold that, give me that in Luke 22 verse 1. The feast of unleavened bread is also called, is also known the feast of the Passover, which we just celebrated, okay? Which we just celebrated 50 days ago. 50 days ago, we were observing the feast of unleavened bread. Okay, read that. The book of, the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 1. Come on. Now the feast of unleavened bread, July, mm -hmm. which is called the Passover. Which is called the what? Which is called the Passover. Which is called the Passover. So go back. Exodus 23, read verse uh, 14 again. 15 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 15. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. We shall keep the feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover. Come on. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. Meaning bread without eat. Seven days we eat unleavened bread. Come on. As I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month Abib. In the month Abib. The month Abib is called the year of corn. Okay. The month Abib is also known as the year of corn. Okay. Read. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So in the month of Abib, we understand, which is what? March, April. That's when we came out of Egypt during the Exodus. That's when we celebrated the Passover. Okay? Read. And the Feast of Harvest. The Feast of what? And the Feast of Harvest. The Feast of Harvest. That's what we just read. Harvesting is the process of gathering a ripe crop from the field. Okay? Come on. The first fruits of thy labors. Uh -huh. Which thou hast sown in the field. You see that? So the Feast of Harvest. The feast of harvest is the first fruit of our labors which we have sown in the field. Remember, what we read in Exodus, it says, the wheat and the barley was not grown up yet. Okay, read. And the feast of ingathering. Mm, the feast of ingathering is the feast of tabernacles 
which is still coming up. Read. Which is in the end of the year. Uh -huh. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. It says, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. When thou hast gathered, that's going into Pentecost. You understand? Because that's when we want, because remember, Pentecost, we have it. You understand? We have it in our crop. Okay? So go back. Go back to, you know what? Hmm. Go back to Exodus now. Exodus chapter 9. Read verse 32 again. The book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 32. Go ahead. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. You see that? The wheat and the rye were not smitten by the hail and the fire that came down when the Lord was smiting the Egyptians when he was delivering us out of the hand of Egypt, out of the hand of Pharaoh. Watch this now. Give me Exodus 34 verse 22. Let's see the crop that was that we were harvesting during the Feast of Pentecost. Okay? Exodus 34. Read verse 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. Go ahead. And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. The Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Harvest. The Feast of Fast Fruits. The Feast of Pentecost. It's all making reference to the same thing. Read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. Read. Right. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks mm -hmm. of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Stop right there. Of the first fruits of what? Of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Wheat harvest. Remember, the, the feast of Pentecost, we celebrated 50 days after the Passover. You understand? That's why it says, the wheat and the barley was not grown up. They were not smitten because they were not grown up yet. They were sown, but they were not grown up yet. You understand? Read that again. Verse 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. Read. Right. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks mm -hmm. of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Read. Right. And the feast of ingathering at the year's end. So the feast of ingathering is the feast of Pentecost. You don't know what the feast of Pentecost is? There's a video on YouTube that we put up. You can, you can watch that to understand. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. We understand now, it is the Feast of Pentecost is the Feast of Harvest. What crop was being harvested? The wheat. The wheat. The wheat. Okay, wheat harvest. Read that, Deuteronomy 16, verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. Come on. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Mm -hmm. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Now stop right there. Now hold this. Go back to Leviticus 23. We're coming back. Leviticus 23. Read verse 10 again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10. Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, mm -hmm. and shall reap the harvest thereof. Stop right there. And ye shall what? And shall reap the harvest thereof. And ye shall reap the harvest thereof. What was we harvesting? Wheat. We were harvesting wheat. It was wheat harvest. Right? Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your you harvest. Shall what? You shall what? Then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits. You shall bring the sheep of the first, you're a sheep of the first food. The sheep of the first food. What is a sheep? What is a sheep? Let's see what is a sheep. Okay. Let's see what is a sheep. Hold on a second. Mm, let me share my screen real quick. Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Um, so read that sheep. The definition of sheaf, mm -hmm. down, a bundle of grain stalks laid lengthways and tied together after reaping. Read that again. A bundle of grain stalks laid lengthways and tied together after reaping. You see, it says a bundle of grain stalks laid lengthways, meaning according to their length, from head to the length, okay, it says, and tied together after reaping. So which type of which type of grain stock was this? Wheat, wheat, wheat grain stock. Okay, wheat grain stock. Let's see what a sheep looks like. Okay, do you see my screen? Do you see this? Yes, sir. 
that right there, that is a sheep. You see that? That's a sheep right there. That. That right there. That's a sheep. This thing that you see here, that's a sheep. Read the definition again of a sheep. The definition of a sheep. Uh -huh. Now, a bundle of grain stalks laid lengthways and tied together after reaping. Lengthways and tied together. You see that? Lengthways and tied together after reaping. Watch this now. Um, read, read, uh, read that verse again that we just read. Um, in, um, um, in Leviticus 23 verse 10. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, mm -hmm. and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest unto the priest. So the sheaf of the first fruits is talking about the sheaf of the wheat, because it was wheat harvest season. So the sheaf is talking about the sheaf of the what? Of the wheat. Now watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 16. Okay, because something we read in there. Deuteronomy chapter 16, read verse 9 one more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 9. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. As thou beginnest to do what? As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. So guess what? Remember, um, the corn, let me show you something. As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Hmm. Go back to Exodus 9, because I know some of you might have forgot. Exodus 9. Exodus chapter 9, read verse 30 again. The book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 30. Go ahead. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that you will not fear the Lord God. Mm -hmm. And the flax and the barley were smitten. For the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bald. So now look, look, look at the, the, the look at the cross. It says flax, barley. Okay. So they says the flax and the barley was smitten. Okay. Read on. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten. For they were not grown up. Because they were not grown up. Because they were sown, but they're not grown up yet. So here it says, but the wheat and the rye. So when it says you shall begin to put the sickle to the corn, it's not going into the actual corn. It goes into this cross right here. Because at this time, these ones were not grown up yet. But during the feast of 50 to 50 days later, after the feast of after the feast of our, of our leavened bread, when we came out of Egypt, guess what? This is the this is the crop that we were harvesting on the feast of Pentecost. You understand? So when it says you shall begin to put the sickle to the corn, it's not talking about actual corn. It's talking about into going into this crop. Wheat, rye, as an example. Okay. So now go back. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen verse nine. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter sixteen verse nine. Read. Seven weeks are the number unto thee. Mm -hmm. Begin to number the seven weeks. From such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn, meaning to the wheat. To the wheat. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something today. Let's go back um, to the picture of the sheep. Okay. It says, as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. I'm going to show you what that sickle is. Sickle to the corn, right? Meaning to the wheat. Okay. Read that again so we understand. It says, from that time thou, as thou beginnest to what? From such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. From such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. You see that thing right there? That. If you can see it. You see that thing right there? That right there, that's a sickle. Anybody see that? Yes, sir. That right there, that's a sickle. That has been put to the what? To the sheep. That right there, that's a sickle. Meaning a string that you tie around the what? The sheep. Okay? That's what he's talking about right there. So, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. One more again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 9. Come on. Seven weeks are the number unto thee. Mm -hmm. Begin to number the seven weeks 
from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. So once the sickle has been put to the corn, they get presented to the priest. But what we're reading here is the seven weeks, thou sh it says, shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time. Guess what? So we're supposed to number. It's even giving us the timeline from the time when we're supposed to count to the day when we are going to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. So we must count from when? Watch this. Jump up to verse. Read verse 8. Okay, read verse 8 so we understand. The feast day that we just celebrated, you understand, be 50 days before. Read verse 8, Deuteronomy 16. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 8. Six days thou shalt eat and live in bread. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Meaning it is Sabbath. So, guess what? The feast of a living bread is seven days. When it says six days here, remember, the first day, there's a specific menu that we're supposed to eat on the first day of the Passover. We are supposed to have unleavened bread, bitter herb, lamb or goat that is roasted, burned with fire. Okay? So, guess what? After that, we're supposed to count seven weeks. Seven weeks. Now, Let's go to Leviticus 23 now. Go back to Leviticus 23. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy 16. Go to Leviticus 23. Read verse 10. One more game. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, mm -hmm. When you come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Unto the priest, because remember the Levites were the high priest. We they are, they are the ones that we had to deal with wherever we did any type of sacrifices, anything we had to do that had to do with the Lord, we had to go through the Levites because they were the high priest. Go ahead. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. He shall do what? And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. He shall wave the sheep before the Lord. He shall wave the sheep before the Lord. Guess what? He says he shall wave the sheep before the Lord. The priest will take the sheep and wave it. Meaning what? He has to raise it up in front of everyone and wave it as if he's, 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 he's greeting everyone. But he shall wave the sheep. Okay? Read. To be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. You see that thing? It says, it says to be accepted for you. You who? You Israelites. Okay? On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So on the morrow after the Sabbath, the most that God is touching to is beginning to give us the timeline, you understand, on when we're supposed to observe the Feast of Pentecost. Keep reading. And he shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a mm -hmm. burnt offering unto the Lord. Because remember, not only did we did we bring the first fruit of our harvest, but guess what? They had to be what the, the burnt offerings also had to be done on the altar of burnt offerings. You understand? We had, because remember, this is still the way we the sacrifice, the offerings and the sacrifices and all that, because we're still under the law of animal sacrifice. So that's why we also had to do this as well by the priest, through the priest. Right? And the meat offering thereof shall be two ten deals of fine flour. Mingles oil. So now he's telling you what the meat offerings are. The meat offering is this what? Two ten deals of fine flour mingled with oil. Okay, go ahead. An offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savior. Mm -hmm. And go the ahead. drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hymn. Now these are all measure measuring instruments, the measurements that the Lord commanded us. On how to pour the wine, the, the meat offerings also. It says two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil. He's giving us the measurements and so forth. Now watch this. Give me that in Leviticus 2. Leviticus the second chapter. So understand when it says meat offering, it's not actually making reference to actual flesh. Let's see what the meat offering is actually uh, comprised of. Read that. Leviticus 2 verse 1. We're going to read down. The book of Leviticus chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. 
And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, Great. his offering shall be of fine flour. Mm. And he shall pour oil unto it and put frankincense thereon. So now these are spices. The most that God is teaching us how to what? How to prepare and offer the meat offering. Because this was for the Levites to do for all Israel. So the meat offerings include the flour, flour, oil, frankincense, which goes into spices and all that, to season it. Read. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. Mm. And he shall take the out his handful of the flour thereof. Read. And of the oil thereof. Come on. With all the frankincense thereof. Really? And the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar. You see that thing? It says the priest shall burn the memorial of it, of the it is the what? The meat offering upon the altar of burnt offering. Go ahead. To be an offering made by fire of a sweet savior unto the Lord. You see that? An offering made by fire of a sweet savior unto the Lord. We don't. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. You see that? So the meat offering goes into what? It goes into your flour, your oil, and things like that. Okay, let's not talk about actual flesh of animal or of beast. Okay, let's go back. Leviticus 23. Okay. Leviticus 23. Read verse 13. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 13. Come on. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil. Ray. An offering made by fire unto the Lord for his sweet savior. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine. The fourth part of an inn. So now this goes in, it, he's going into the details of the actual or the actual offering that we had to bring. You understand? So when we brought the first food unto the priest and all that, guess what? These were the sacrifices also that we had that had to be performed on that day. Okay, which would be today. Read on. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute for you forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So now you see what he's saying? It says, he shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day when you have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever, even throughout your generation in all your dwellings. Remember, this, that's why it's called the first food of our harvest. So we couldn't eat anything, you understand? Anything that we've harvested, the first food of our harvest, we couldn't eat any of it until it was brought to the most High God. And only then after, then we can begin to eat. But the first food, they go to the most High God and some go to the priest, the Levites. You understand? That's why he says we shall eat. No, don't eat none of it until you've offered unto the most High God. So re, re, guess what? What we're eating here, the bread, the parched corn, the green ears and all that, this only took place only because the Most High God, he blessed the land. There was rain, you understand? The Most High God took care of us. So there was abundance. That's why we were able to, what? That, that, that was our way of giving back to the Most High God, thanking the Most High God, giving thanks to the Heavenly Father for blessing us, our children, our land, and for our cattle. Because they also needed the things that grew from the ground to eat and survive. And guess what? When they ate, we ate. You see that? Read. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Read. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now read verse 15 one more again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. Come on. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. They see that? Hold on. He says, he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Remember, we coming from what? We coming from um, the feast of the feast of the feast of the Passover. We've been observing the feast of the Passover. So he's telling us the day when we are going to be counting um, the days that will lead up to the feast of the Pentecost, the feast of the feast or day of Pentecost. He's telling us what? Read that part again, verse fifteen. The 
book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. Read. And it shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From tomorrow after the Sabbath, read. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So it says seven Sabbaths must be complete. So that means you must count seven complete Sabbaths, you understand? And one day after that Sabbath, that seventh Sabbath, you must count one day, which will bring, which will make 50 days. So this will be 50 days after the feast of the Passover. You understand? Seven Sabbaths must be complete plus one day. That's why it says the morrow after the Sabbath. That will be the 50th day. That's why it's called Pentecost. Pentecost, Penta means 50. Okay, the 50th day. Read again, verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. <clears throat> and he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Go ahead. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbath shall you number 50 days. Shall you number how and many shall days? Shall you number 50 days. You shall number 50 days. Go ahead. And he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. I want you to, what verse you have? You read in verse 15, right? It says, seventh Sabbath shall be complete. Okay, now watch this. Read verse 15 one more again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 16. Come on. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. And he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Okay, stop right there. Now, give me one second. One second, one second, one second. I just want to look at something real quick. Uh, so I can give some elaborate example here. One, one, one second. Let me share my screen. I want you to read that verse again. Verse 15 and 16 together. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. Come on. And it shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, mm -hmm. seven Sabbath shall be complete. Seven Sabbath shall be complete. Go ahead. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. And he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So now it says seven Sabbaths shall be complete and plus one day, the morrow after the Sabbath. So brothers and sisters, you still remember when we observed the feast of the Passover, it was, it was when? In April, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, when was it? Okay. So let's see. This is May. This is where we are. We are here. So we are in May. We are on the 22nd of May, right? Together so far? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, up to Saturday. So this is the 7th Saturday. Do you see that 7th Saturday right there? The 7th Sabbath is this one. So 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You see that? Yes, sir. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is how many days? This is 49 days. And the morrow after the Sabbath, that's the 22nd of May, which started Saturday sundown because it's a double Sabbath. Okay? So, the 22nd, this day right here, is the day when we observe the feast of the day of Pentecost, which is where we are now. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises to the most high. So now, um, okay, so Leviticus 23, read verse, read verse 16 one more again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 16. Come on. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, Shall mm -hmm. you number 50, 50 days? We shall number 50 days because we count seven complete Sabbaths. You must count seven complete Sabbaths plus one day. That makes it 50 days 
after the feast of the Passover. Okay, come on. And he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Hold that. Go back to Deuteronomy 16 verse 9 now. Deuteronomy 16 verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 9. Go ahead. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. You see that? Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. This is what we just did now. Seven weeks is seven complete Sabbaths. That's what we read in Leviticus 23 verse 16. This is the precept. Go ahead. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Read. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with mm. a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand. You see that? It says not only that, but you must what? You must give, you must bring a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand. Go ahead. Which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. According as the as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. You see that? According as the Lord thy God has blessed you. So you're going to give according to how the Most High God has blessed you. Because remember, you keep the commandments of the Most High God as when we keep God's commandments, the Lord will bless each and every family. You understand? According to what? According to us keeping the Most High God's laws and being right with the Lord, being in right standing with the Most High God by keeping His laws. The Most High God will bless us Based on how the Lord has blessed us, you also bless the Lord. You give back to the Most High God. Because every blessing that we receive, guess what? It's not about you. Whatever blessing that you've got is not yours. It's of the Most High. It's for the Lord. So you must give back to the Most High God this day. Now watch this. Okay? I'm talking to cheap Negroes now. Okay? He says you must give back according to what? How the Lord has blessed you. Now watch this. Give me to Tom 8. Okay, because the Most High God definitely, He did bless us when we kept the commandment. Watch this, Deuteronomy 8. Read verse, let's start at verse 1. Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 1. Read. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that ye may live and mm. multiply. Come on. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. He says, We may, it says, What we may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord our God swear unto our fathers. Read, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness who mm -hmm. humble thee and to prove thee. So, humble us and to prove us. The most that God is about humbling is about proving or testing us. That's how the Most High God does things. To test whether we're going to keep his commandments or not. Read. To know what was in thine heart. Read. Whether thou will just keep his commandments or no. Whether you keep his commandments or not. Come on. And he humbled thee. And suffered thee to hunger. Read verse 3 again. Come on, come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Read. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Uh-huh. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Read. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only. Come on. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man you live. See that? You see that? The most that God, he says, he allowed us to, he allowed, he suffered us to hunger, you understand, and fed us with men, I mean, angels' bread. Okay? Read. Thy raiment works not old upon thee. Mm. Neither did thy foot swell these 40 days. You see what he's saying? He says, Our raiment, meaning our clothes, did not get old, did not get jacked up. Neither did our foot swell these 40 days, meaning our shoes were still intact. Because the most high God, he took care of us. Wait. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as the man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. You see that thing? He says, The same way a father corrects his son. Likewise, the most high God is correcting us. Read. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Read. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, mm -hmm. a land of brooks of water, of Come fountains, on. of depths that spring out of valleys and hills. That's the land of that flowers with milk and honey, meaning a fertile land. Read. A land of wheat and barley and vine. Uh -huh. A land of wheat 
which is the Feast of Pentecost is about when we were when we reaping, it was during the time of wheat harvest. Okay, and barley. Go ahead. And fig trees and pomegranates. Mm -hmm. A land of oil, olive, and honey. Come on. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Really? Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and whose hills thou, thou mayest dig brass. Is an out of whose hills thou mayest dig, dig brass. Go ahead. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Now read that again. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 10. Come on. When thou hast eaten and art full. Stop right there. Then, when thou hast eaten and you are full from what? Go ahead. Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. You see that thing we must what? He says, we shall bless the Lord our God for the good land which he has given us. We must always remember the blessings that we receive, whatever blessings we get, guess what? We must always give back to the Most High. We must always give the Lord his praise and his glory and his honor, which he so deserves, okay? Because we don't deserve none of these things. It's only because of what? The covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who did not sin. Read. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. You see that thing? He says, beware. Be careful now that you don't forget the most thy God. Read. In not keeping his commandments and his uh -huh. judgment. Come and on. his statutes, which are commanded this day. Because Israel, we tend to forget. Whenever we get blessed, we forget the most thy God. That's why verse 10 and 11 now. Read 10 and 11 together. So I can show you the connection here. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 10. Read. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Read. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Stop right there. Not you see that? He says, when thou hast eaten and you are full, for the, for, the, for the good land that the Lord has blessed you, he says, beware that you don't forget the Lord your God. Because when Israel gets full, guess what they do? They forget the most that God that what? That made them. Both this. Get to Tommy 32. I'm going to give an example. Okay, this is what Israel does. Israel does this when they are full. Deuteronomy chapter 32, read verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 13. Mm -hmm. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. Meaning what? Everything was good for us. The Lord took care of us. We were living large. Okay, go ahead. That he might eat the increase of the fields. That we may do what? That he might eat the increase of the fields. That we, that Israel may eat the increase of the fields which the Lord has blessed. Read. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock. Mm. And oil out of the flinty rock. Meaning what? We were living large. We were rich. Well, we were wealthy. Read. Butter of kine and milk of sheep. Mm. With fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan. Come on. And, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Read. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. You see that? We were wealthy. We were wealthy. It says what? With the fat of the kidneys of wheat. Wheat harvest. Go ahead. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. You see that? You see what happens when Israel gets comfortable? It says we what? We waxed fat. Meaning we, when we everything was good, we kicked. What did we do? Go ahead. Thou art waxed and fat. Mm -hmm. Thou art grown thick. Read. Thou art covered with fatness. Read. Then he forsook God which, which made him. Then he forsook God which made him. Isn't that what we just read in Deuteronomy 8? It says, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Because when everything was good, we forsook God that made us. Go ahead. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. You see that thing? We lightly esteemed the rock of our salvation. We didn't give a damn about the most high God when everything was good for us. That is not for you. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Now, not only that, when we pursued the Lord, we went to worship other gods. Read. Right? With abominations provoked they him to anger. We are but with disgusting things that are that are deep, abominable in the sight of the Lord. Guess what? We pursued the Lord that made us, and we started to do what? We provoked the most high God to anger. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. You see that? That is them. Read. To gods whom they knew not. Mm. To new gods that came newly up. 
whom your fathers feared not. Come on. Of the rock that we get thee art thou unmindful. Really? And has forgotten God that formed thee. That's the, that is our point. That's why we love the kingdom. We only had the kingdom for 80 years. We had the kingdom. And after that, we've been up from one captivity after another until this day, 2022. Go back to where he was at now. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 8, read verse 11 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Okay. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and Wait. his statutes, which I command thee this day. Come on. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Wait. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. And when you have all these things, when the most has blessed you, Read. Then thine heart be lifted up. Then you become proud. You understand? Your heart become lifted up and you forget the Lord thy God. Read. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Come on. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, where in fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth out of the rock of flint. You see that? Out of the rock of flint. Come on, read. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, mm. which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee, to do thee good thy latter end. To do us good in the latter end. Because when we do, do good, we keep God's commandments. In the latter end, the Lord will do us good. He will give us the kingdom that he promised, uh, he promised unto our fathers. Read. And thou shalt say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. You see that? Because that's what Israel started to do. That's what Israel did back then, and so it is today. Go ahead. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, mm. that may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. You see that? So the, mo the most High God always reminded us, listen, I'm going to take care of you, but don't forget. Because lest we forget. Israel always forgets this stuff. Okay? We become comfortable, become complacent. We no longer want to study. We no longer want to apply. We no longer want to do the work of the most High God. We become slothful. Why? Because Israel gets complacent. You no longer have the joy to serve the Lord no more. When you have to pick up the Bible and read, it feels like a burden on your back. Guess what? You've worked and said you've kicked. You don't give a damn about the most high God no more. The spirit is leaving the building. Understand that. Now, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 16 now. Deuteronomy 16, read verse. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Uh, let's go back there. Deuteronomy chapter 16, read verse 10. One more again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, Read. which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Read. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates, mm -hmm. and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. That's Jerusalem. So now, what you, you see this, this right here, when you keep the commandments, you understand, you obey the Lord, the voice of the Lord our God, and the Lord blesses us with rain, with crops, and our crops don't die, our crops don't, you understand, they don't drop the fruit before the time and all that, meaning that most of God has blessed us. Guess who's going to be taken care of? You, your son, your daughter, your man servant. Your maid servant, the Levite also, that we did that get because they did not get allotment of land. It was the stranger, the fatherless, and the widows. So it was there's, there was a lot of people that benefited from us keeping the commandments and the Lord blessing us and our crop. You understand? Read. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Read. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. So that this goes into the Feast of Tabernacles. But what I'm showing you here is he's giving into the details who was going to benefit from.
from us keeping his commandment when he has blessed us guess what we would do the people that would benefit from us keeping the commandments because the most High god has blessed us this day now go back to leviticus the 23rd chapter leviticus 23 let's go back there leviticus 23 um read verse 17 now the book of leviticus chapter 23 verse 17 come on you shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals they shall be of fine flour they shall be baking with leaven they are the first fruit of the lord you see that thing they are the first fruit of the lord you see what he's saying he says he says two wave loaves of the of two tenth deals giving the measurement of these meat offering they shall be of fine flour they shall be baking with leaven okay meaning these are not unleavened they are the first fruits unto the lord go ahead and he shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year you see that it says he shall offer with the bread seven lambs so notice notice the animals that also had to be that had to that had to be brought together with the what with the meat offerings we're to bring as part of the first fruit of our harvest. Guess what? These were part of the what? The burnt offerings. Okay, come on. And young one bullock and two rams, they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savior unto the Lord. Come on. Then he shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. So now you have, you, have, you have sin offering, peace offering, meat offering, drink offering, of offerings that we just read about. Go ahead. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. Come on. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. They shall be holy unto the Lord for the priest because the Levites had to get also. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 21. And he shall proclaim in the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Stop right there. Read that part again. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 21. Read. And he shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. He says he shall proclaim on the selfsame day. Day. So the day of Pentecost is only one day. That's why it says he shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. We get ourselves together. Read on. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It's a Sabbath. Whenever you hear you shall do no servile work therein, he's telling you that it's a Sabbath day also. Come on. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. You see that, read? And when ye reap the harvest of your land, mm -hmm. thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shall thou gather any cleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So now the Lord is telling us, that, listen, when you reaping during that reap harvest, he says, make sure also you don't make a clean reading, reading of the corners of thy field. Meaning you must leave, you must leave the wheat also of the crop. Whatever crop that you are harvesting during that time, he says, you must not, you must not clean up the whole field during the harvest. You must leave some. That's why it says, you must what? It says, of the corners of thy field, when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor of Israel. Now watch this. Get that in Leviticus 19, verse 9. Leviticus 19, verse 9. Because remember what Christ said also. It says, you have the poor with you always. Likewise, we must always leave them. We leave the poor. We live for the poor, the widows, the fatherless, and, and so forth. Okay? Read that. Leviticus 19, verse 9. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 9. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou gather the cleanings of thy harvest. Read. And thou shalt not clean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. You see that? He's repeating the law again. Okay? Because the Bible is repetitive because... Israel is slow. Okay, now watch this. Now, what we just went over here, we just we just read here. The most High God is commanding us that we must take care of each other. That's what the Lord is also is also explaining to us. Because we're in captivity, we are poor. The Lord says we must take care of one another. 
That's why sometimes, a lot of the time, some brothers, they, their spirit has left them. Now they, have, they, are, they are in the right mind. Some, they have, that spirit has not left them yet. That's why when we have, there's something, there's a situation in the congregation, we need to help another brother to deal, to deal with certain issues and all that. Some brothers, they do it, but they don't do it with the spirit of joy. Listen, don't do it. If you know that you're complaining on the inside, you don't want to do it, keep your damn money in your damn pocket. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you straight up here. Okay? Some of you, you do it, but you don't really want to do it. You're sitting by your in some corner somewhere, you're complaining by yourself. No, no, just keep it in your pocket. Because why? Because we don't want it. Those that the Lord has given the spirit to say, you know what? I understand what this Bible is saying. I understand what's going on here. Let's see. I'm a, I'm a brother's keeper. If you have that spirit, obey to the Lord. Okay? Now, watch this. Remember, the, the, these laws, we have to keep them when we were in our land. But in the land of our captivity, we're still supposed to keep them like we read in Judges 5, verse 11. Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit. This is during the time of, because Tobit was during the time of the Assyrian Empire. Okay? Tobit, chapter 1, verse 1. Let's start with it. Our forefather Tobit from the type of from the tribe of Naphtali. Read what you got. The book of Tobit, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. The book of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiel, the son of Ananiel, the son of Aduel, the son of Kabael, of the seed of Azael, of the tribe of Naphtali. Of the tribe of Naphtali. Go ahead. Who in the time of Enamasa, king of the Assyrians, was led captive out of this, Read. which at the right hand of the of that city. Come on. Called properly Naphtali in Galilee above Asher. You see that? Naphtali in Galilee above Asher. Go ahead. I told it, have walked all the days of my life in the way of truth and justice. And I did many almond, alms deeds to my brethren and my nation who came with me to Nineveh into the land of the Assyrians. You see that? So now this is northern kingdom. Go ahead, because they were taken over by the Assyrians. Read. And when I was in my own country. This is Jerusalem in, now. When he was in Jerusalem, what did he do? Come on. In the land of Israel, being but young, all the tribe of Naphtali, my father fell from the house of Jerusalem, which was chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, that all the tribes should sacrifice there where the temple of the habitation of the Most High was consecrated and built for all ages. So now he's saying, listen, when he came into the land, guess what? He realized that there's, there's, there's things that need to be done. Arms did not need to be done. He needed to help also. Okay, come on. Now all the tribes which together revolted, and the house of my father, Naphtali, sacrificed unto the Haifa, Baal, Baal is uh, unto the heifer Baal because it says, Now all the tribes which came with the, all the tribes which together revolted. Which tribes revolted? Remember, this is Northern Kingdom. They revolted half because who was over Northern Kingdom? It was Jeroboam. Jeroboam was over Northern Kingdom. They revolted when, when they worshiped Baal. They, they had what? They started to worship, um, they started to worship other gods. They set up two golden calves. You understand? That they put one in Dan, you understand? Why? Because they were no longer keeping God's commandments. And for that, that's why the Assyrians came and took them off. Because of what? Worshipping of other gods, idolatry. Because that was their issue. Read. But I alone went often to Jerusalem at the feasts, mm -hmm. as it was ordained unto all the people of Israel by an everlasting decree. You see that? That's what we just read, that everlasting decree. In, the, in Exodus, in Leviticus, in Deuteronomy. Go ahead. Having the first fruits and tenths of increase. You see that? Having the first fruits and tenths of increase. That's what we just said. Read on. With that which was first shown, mm -hmm. and then gave I at the altar to the priests, the children of Aaron. You see that? That's what we read in Leviticus 23, 15 down. Okay? In which was first shown. Remember, Remember, the first shot going into what? When we were what? When we were using the sick, the sickle to do what? To do the harvesting of the first fruit. Before we would put the sickle to the corn, which goes into what? The wheat. Okay? So, guess what? Our forefather told me, he observed 
the what the feast the feast for the day of Pentecost. You observe that, okay? So in captivity, we cannot say, oh no, we cannot observe that because that was only in the land. That will be simple as hell, okay? Give me that in chapter two, verse one. We're gonna read one and two. The book of Tobit, chapter two, verse one. Come on. Now when I was come home again, when my wife Anna was restored unto me, mm -hmm. with my son Tobias, in the feast of Pentecost. In the what? In the feast of Pentecost. In the feast of Pentecost. So our forefather Tobit, his house, they observed the feast of Pentecost. You understand? He's, he himself, his wife, and Tobias. Okay, as it is written in Deuteronomy 6, that the children must know, they must learn, they must observe to do the laws that are written in this book. Go ahead. Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. You see that? Which is the holy feast of the seven weeks. So Pentecost is the holy feast of the seven weeks. Go ahead. Plus one day. Tomorrow after the Sabbath. Go ahead. There was a good dinner prepared me. Mm -hmm. In the which I sat down to eat. You see that that good dinner is the, is the food that we eat during that feast. Come on. And when I saw abundance of meat, mm -hmm. I said to my son, go and bring what poor man soever thou shalt find out of our brethren. You see that? It says, go and look for the poor man that you are just going to find out of our brethren. Go ahead. Who is mindful of the Lord? Now that's very important right there. Who is mindful of the Lord? So it's not saying just go out and feed some homeless person the, 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 the meat of the feast of the of the feast of Pentecost. Mm -mm. It says, who is mindful of the law? So guess what? If they are keeping the commandments of the most high God, it says, listen, go and help them with the food that we've got for the feast that they also can observe this feast. Go ahead. And lo, I tell you for thee. It says, I'm gonna wait for you. Okay. Now, during the time of the Greek. Did we observe the Feast of Pentecost? Of course we did. Second Maccabees 12. Second Maccabees chapter 12, verse 31. Read that for me. Okay. Second Come Maccabees on. chapter 12, verse 31. Read. They gave them thanks, desiring them to be friendly still unto them. Mm -hmm. And so they came to Jerusalem, the Feast of the Weeks approaching. You see that the feast, the feast of the week approaching. They came to Jerusalem because the feast of week was approaching. Go ahead. And after the feast called Pentecost. You see that after the feast called Pentecost, the 50th day. Read on. They went forth against Gogaius, the governor of Idumea. Because we were as we were at war with the Greeks. You understand? But during that time, even also, we observed the feast. Okay, give me the book of Acts, chapter two, verse one. Okay, during the time of the during the time of the the Romans, during the time of Rome, did we observe the feast of Pentecost? Let's see, Acts chapter two, verse one. Let's start there. The book of Acts, chapter two, verse one. Go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, you see that when the day, when the day, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Come on. They were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one place. And that's very important that we all in one accord. Because if we are all in one accord, guess what? We will achieve great things. We are all in one accord and we know how to work well together. We will achieve great things. But if we gather together, but one Negro or one Negro, they are not in one accord with us, guess what? They are the ones that are countering missionary to this movement. You understand? And we're going to steam roll over them. Understand. Read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Where the apostles were sitting. Where the apostles were sitting is that the what they came a sound out of heaven, a rushing mighty wind. Okay. It was noticeable because they were able to see it as it was rushing mighty wind, a sound from the most high God. Read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Like as of fire, uh -huh. and it set upon each of them. It set upon each of the, the apostles. The cloven tongues means diverse tongues. Cloven tongues means diverse tongues. Go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were what? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The apostles were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna give an explain. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the sense here. Go ahead. And began to speak with other tongues 
mm-hmm. as the Spirit gave them utterance. He says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues. The cloven tongues is the other tongues, meaning other languages. But guess what? This when it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. You know what? Hold it. Before we get there, give me the book of John, okay? Give me John 20, verse 22. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you a difference here. Acts, I mean, John 20, read verse 22. Start of verse 21. Start of verse 21. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 21. Come on. Then said Jesus to them again, mm-hmm. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Go ahead. Peace be unto you. As my Father had sent me, even so sent I you. He said, that just as my Father sent me, I'm sending you also. Go ahead. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see what he said? He says, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Ghost, right? He says, Receive the Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost here that he says he breathed on them. Let me show you what that is talking about. Get that in Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 44. Luke 24, verse 44. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44. Come on. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. Mm -hmm. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, Mm. and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. You see that the thing, everything must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses, the Psalms and the prophets concerning him coming and dying for the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Read that again, verse 45. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 45. Come on. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Then Christ opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures, the scriptures. So go back to John 20, verse 22. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 22. Come on. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So that, 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 that's what he's talking about here. Yeah, what we read in John 20, he's talking about what we read here in Luke. When he says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, when he breathed on them, he gave them the understanding of the scripture. This is different from what we just read in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 verse 4, yeah? The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this Holy Ghost right here is not the same as what we read in Acts 20 verse 20, in John 20 verse 22. What we read in John 20 verse 22 is the understanding of the scripture. What we read in here Give me Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts 1, verse 8. This is what this is what, what we read, what we just read in Acts 2, verse 4 is that which was is what we're about to read in Acts 1 and 8. Read Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. But ye shall receive power. Ye shall after what? That, but ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. Power. Power is the key. Come on. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You see that? He says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So this Holy Ghost that we, that we just read here in Acts 2 verse 4, when the apostles were able to speak other languages, other tongues, is the power they received. So it's different from what we just read in John 20 verse 22, in Luke 24 verse 44 and 45. Acts 2 verse 4 is the power in Acts 1 and 8. You understand? Because to learn a new language, it takes time. You understand? It takes time to learn a new language to speak it fluently. So this is letting you know um, that guess what? The power that the apostles had during the time of the, the during the day of Pentecost, the, guess what? It was temporary. You understand? It was temporary. There was going to come a time where it was no longer going to work. Those things, those miracles that happened back then, like that, they were not going to happen like that anymore in these last days. Give me Second Ezra nine verse six. Second Ezra chapter nine verse six. Watch this. 
second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 6. Come on. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works. In wonders and powerful works. The powerful works, the, the world began, guess what? The, the way the world began, there was powerful miracles and signs and all that. That's how the world began. You understand? That's what Ezra is seeing us here. But in the last days, what would be left? Go ahead. And endings in effects and signs. And ending in effects and signs. What are those effects and signs? The curses. They are the judgments of Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26. You understand? That's what it's going into here. So that's why it says ending in effects and signs. You understand? So those powerful signs and all that, yeah, we no longer have those. Okay. We no longer can touch the people. We no longer can uh, just touch people and they just come back from the dead. We can't do that. That video of Pastor Luca who says he rose somebody, rose somebody from the dead, like Lazarus was raised up from the dead, that's just some evil stuff. You understand? We can no longer do those things anymore. The only part, the only, the only goal that we have now is the spirit of Christ to understand what the scriptures say so we can apply it. Okay? Now, Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read verse, um, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. Okay. First book of Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Read. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. You see what he's saying? He says, but charity never fails. Meaning, love your neighbor as yourself. That never fails. But guess what? He says, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Go ahead. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. You see that? Whether they be tongues, they shall see, like what we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. That type of power is that that's going to stop. Read. Whether they be knowledge, it shall, be, it shall vanish away. You see that thing? Now, let's go back. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. One more again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Because here they had that power, which we no longer have today. Go ahead. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You said out of every nation under heaven, the Jews that dwelt at Jerusalem, because they were there to observe the Feast of Pentecost. Come on. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Mm -hmm. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. You see that? That every man had them speak in his own language. Remember, this is Israel coming from different lands, different lands, different nations, speaking the languages of those captivities. Like today we speak Zulu, English, Afrikaans, the Relic, Onga, Sutu, French, and all that. That's the same thing that was happening back then. Coming out from different captivities, speaking different languages to come and observe the Feast of Pentecost. And when they arrived, guess what? The apostles were speaking in the languages of our captivity way in we were born. It was not this shabara shabara, hewa ta ta ta, not, none of that. That's the devil. It was not glasolalia. Okay? Read. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying mm -hmm. one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? He, uh, uh, he says what? Is behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Meaning those that are in Galilee. How are they speaking the languages of our captivity wherein we are born? That was well, that's the reason why they were amazed. That's why it was a miracle. Go ahead. And and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? You see that? How do we how are we able to hear them in the tongue wherein we are born? How is this possible? Because guess what? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia. And in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, mm -hmm. Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in, in part and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. You see that? So these are the Israelites coming out of all these different lands, speaking the languages of these lands, coming to Jerusalem, being amazed, seeing the apostles speaking the languages of their captivity. That's the tongue, that's the cloven tongue he's talking about. He's not talking about glasolalia. Go ahead. Cretes and Arabians, 
we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You see that? They were speaking in the languages of their captivity. That's why they were amazed. And said, hey, how are you able to speak in the tongue wherein we were born? Because guess what? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost because what? They had that power back then. That's why when the apostles were teaching, they were raising the dead. You understand? The apostle Peter, by just passing, he healed the people with his shadow. Get that in Acts 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 15. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 15. Go ahead. In so much that they brought forth the sick unto the streets mm -hmm. and laid them on beds and couches. Really? And at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. You see that? The apostle Peter, listen, that's the power that we read in Acts 1 and 8. The power we read in Acts 2 verse 4. That's why he was able to do this. His shadow was able to heal the people. We don't have that power this day. You understand? We don't have that power no more. Go ahead. There came also a multitude out of the cities, round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone. You see that? They were healed everyone. Now, hmm. Okay, what page is from most like God? Um, we're just going to continue on on the feast of Pentecost. All right. Um, we're going to go to Leviticus 23 and verse 15. Okay. Um, it says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, and from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So we must count seven Sabbaths, seven complete Sabbaths, after the feast of the Passover. Once the feast of the Passover is done, we count seven complete Sabbaths plus one day. Okay, verse 15. Even unto the morrow after the Sabbath shall he number 50 days. So 50 days after the feast of the Passover, we observe the feast of the Pentecost. And he shall offer a meat offering unto the Lord, and he shall bring out of your habitation two Weight loaves of two ten deals, they shall be of fine flour, they shall be baken with leaven, they are the first fruits unto the Lord. So this goes unto what? This goes into the celebration of the feast of the of the feast of the Passover, the feast of the the feast of the first fruits, or the feast of Pentecost, or the day of Pentecost, or the feast of harvest. Okay. Um Let's just go back up to verse 14 because there's something that we explained here, but I didn't actually touch on it. Um, in verse 14, it says, And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor, nor green ears, until the self same day that ye brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. So verse 14, it says, Leviticus 23 verse 14, you shall eat, you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn. Let's deal with that part when it says parched corn. Let's go to the book of Joshua, okay, to explain the parched corn. Because remember, we, we, we had to observe the feast of the Passover. And then after the feast of the Passover, we observe the feast of um, the feast of the first fruits, which is the day of Pentecost. And then after that, we would observe the Feast of Ingathering, which is also called the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? So let's go to Joshua, to Joshua chapter 5 and verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. Okay, and it goes, the book of Joshua chapter 5 is 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal. That's when we were traveling with Joshua. Moses had died at this time and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month and even in the plains of Jericho. So we observe the feast of the Passover, the 14th day of the month, being of the first month at even, which is the 15th day in the plains of Jericho. Verse 11, and they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Remember, for seven days during the feast of the Passover, we eat unleavened bread, okay? So now it says, the morrow after the Passover, it says, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. So the old corn is the, is the parched corn. The old corn is the parched corn. 
It says, and manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the, of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Because the Most High was no longer feeding us with manna from heaven. Because we are in the land, we are able to plant, to, to, to plant, to sow, and to plant and to work the field because we were given allotment of land. Okay? Um, verse, uh, verse 12 again. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So, um, the reason why we had old corn, which is which was parched, was because let's go to Leviticus the twenty third chapter real quick. No, no, no. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen. Uh, Deuteronomy sixteen and verse. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen verse twelve. It says, "And thou shalt remember that thou was a born man in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do his statutes." Verse thirteen. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days, and after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. That's why they call it the feast of in gathering, because after the feast of uh, the day of Pentecost, in the day of Pentecost, it was the feast of harvest. We harvest the, the, the first fruit of our harvest and all that, and we'll give it to the Lord before we eat any of it, and the rest will go to the Levites, and then um, the fatherless, the widows, and the strangers, okay? So what happens is the following year, we would, we would observe the same feast, the Passover, the, uh, the day of Pentecost, and then later on, we would observe the feast of in gathering. So at this time, in Joshua, what we're reading here, we're in the land of Canaan. In Joshua chapter 5, when we go back, Joshua 5 is 12, and the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. The old corn of the land. What is it talking about? It's talking about the old corn that we had the, during the feast of in gathering the previous year. Because we would gather during the test in the day of Pentecost, which is we would have it during the day of during the day of Pentecost. And then during the time of Pente of the, the feast of tabernacles. We will be gathering, this is the time of gathering our crops, where we are storing it, you understand? We'll take the, the, the corn, the crops uh, that we had. In, in this case, uh, like for us, some of us, the Popo, the Bundus, um, they would get Moroho, they would get um, Mili and things like that, and they would store it, okay? Because it will be dry. And then some of it will be, will be ground, okay? So in this case, the parched corn is actually ground wheat. Wheat that was taken and what was ground, okay? And it was used to make, to, make, um, to make cakes, to make bread, so on and so forth. So that's what we read here in Joshua. That's why we had old corn. That old corn, it is the corn that we had gathered during the Feast of Ingathering, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? So let's go back to Leviticus 23 now. Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse, Leviticus 23, verse 14 again. And he shall eat neither bread nor parched corn. So the parched corn is the old, is the corn that was ground, which we, we ate it um, after the, we ate it after the Passover because for seven days of the Passover, we had unleavened bread. And after that, after that, we would have old corn, even up to the time of the Feast of Pentecost, because we had gathered that the year before, okay? And the Most High God will preserve our crops, so on and so forth. The Most High God will, pre will, pre will preserve our, our crops that they will not spoil, okay? So now, but because we, we are in the land of activities now, we can no longer do that because we have broken the commandments of the Most High God. Um, as an example, let's go through the book of Malachi chapter three. Malachi 3 and verse Malachi chapter 3, let's read verse, verse 8 as an example. Malachi 3 verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet have he robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Okay? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Okay? 
the tithes and the offering, the tithes and the offering came from the ground. The tithes and offering was never money. Okay, let's get there. What were the tithes that we had to bring? Um, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 14. Let's see what the tithes were. Okay, the tithes were never money. It was the fruit of our ground. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 22. And thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the seed bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to praise his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the circling of thy herd and of thy flock, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Okay? And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far for thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to send his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then thou shalt turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. So that the tithes were the fruit of the ground, which is the corn, the wine, which comes from olives, okay? And the oil, which comes from olives, the firstlings of our head, because they depended upon the crop that grew, because the Lord blessed the land with rain, okay? Um, and if the, the place is too far from you, meaning the place is Jerusalem, if you are far from Jerusalem, you would take the you take you you sell the stuff there and turn it into money and get to Jerusalem. When you go to Jerusalem, this is what we had to do. Verse 26. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desire. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God and shall rejoice and uh, thou and thine household. Okay, so the tithe was never money. So the most High God, the tithe is talking about what? The fruit of our ground, okay? Let's go back to Malachi 3 now, verse nine. Um, it says, ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. We had storehouses back then. So these storehouses would store our crops. That we got from the field because the most high God would have what would have blessed us and we were able to reap. Um, this is the fruit of our harvest, and we would store them during the, 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 the feast of ingathering of our crops. We would store them into the storehouses, it says that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with uh, the Lord of hosts, if I will not open, if I will not open the windows of heaven, which is rain and pour you out a blessing that goes into rain, that there shall not be room enough for you to receive, room enough to receive. The most high God, he looked after the storehouses. Wherever we store our crops, the most high God will bless them. They will not have mold, okay? Unlike today, because we broke the commandment. Now when we, we would eat those fruits, we would get sick, because the most high God would have what? He would have judged us because we broke the commandments, okay? Um, the example of that, let's get Deuteronomy 28 real quick. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 22. Because if we had to eat the fruits of our crops and we had broken the commandments, the Most High God, when we would store the, the food in the storehouses, the Most High would not bless that. He would curse the, 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 the fruit of our harvest. Okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 22 is that the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption that goes into disease with a fever and with inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew that they and they shall pursue thee until thou perish because that's what the lord will do the lord will curse the, the fruits of our harvests okay verse 23 and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be bread and the air that is under thee shall be iron because the Most High God will make sure there's no rain, okay? And if there was rain, the Most High will not bless the crops that we store in our storehouses. The Lord will make, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. So guess what? There would be a drought upon the land. We would not be able to feed, to, to eat, not be able to take care of our children in our houses, the widows, the fatherless, okay? The Levites. You understand? So the Most High God would do this if we didn't keep his law. So it's very, very important for us to keep the commandments of the Most High 
so that we'll be able to reap the fruit of our ground and praise the Lord and, play, and bless the Levites and bless the fatherless, the, ch the fatherless children and the widows and the saints. Okay, so let's go back um, to Leviticus 23. Now, verse 14, one more again. Leviticus 23. Um, Verse 14, as ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn, nor green ears until the seventh day that ye have brought an offering unto your God, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. So what we're reading here, the parched corn is the, the old corn, like we read in Joshua 5, verse 10 to 12. The old corn that we would have gathered, that we gathered during the time of ingathering, which is the year before. So this parch corn is the old corn which goes into the wheat, okay? That was ground. And we ground that wheat, some would, would sow it, so we may be able to eat it and it will last us until the next year. It was different crops that we sow and we put them in the storehouses, the Lord would bless them. They will not have mildew, they will not have bacteria or creepy crawlers crawl, crawling in there, you understand, pooping in the food, peeing in the food, and when we eat it, we will get sick. But when the Lord blessed us, none of those things happen because the Lord blessed our crops. Okay? So now, um, let's go to the book of Joel real quick. So, in the book of Joel, the Most High God, he also said he was going to bless us in these last days. Um, we keep the commandments when the Lord returns, when we go back into our land, the Most High God will look after us. Um, the book of Joel chapter 2 and verse, I'm not moving quick, Joel 2 and verse 18, because we are no longer in the land no more. So therefore, the most High God is doing what? Uh, there's other people in our land because we broke his laws. But when we return back to the land, which is why the Lord is waking us up now, here's what the Lord says it will happen in his last days. Joel 2 verse 18, he says, then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That's an example right now what the Lord is doing. He's pitying his people. Okay? Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you any reproach among the heathen. Because right now we are a reproach among the heathen. But on this day, the Most High God says he will what? He will send us corn, wine, and oil, and we will be satisfied therewith. Okay, verse 20. But, uh, but I will remove far from you the northern army. This northern army is talking about what? Let's get Joel chapter 2 and verse uh, Joel 2 and verse 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountain, a great people and a strong. There had not been ever the light neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Because the Most High, what we will do, we will bring the Northern Army, okay? This Northern Army is talking about what? It's talking about um, North America, the armies of the U.S., the European nations and all that, okay? The Most High says he will what? He will remove far from us this Northern Army that put us in slavery, changed our name, took our nationality, our book, and our land. And I will drive them into a land barren, and desolate uh, with his face towards the east and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. Okay? The utmost sea is the Mediterranean Sea. That's the utmost sea. Okay? And his ill favor shall come up because he has done great things. Because why? They put the children of Israel in captivity. That goes into what? That goes into the European nation, America being the head of. Um, the seven heads of the dragon. Okay. Um, verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the, for the tree beareth their fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, who hath given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you. It will, come, it will cause to come down for you the rain and the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat and the vest shall overflow with wine and oil. 
and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the pomer worm, my great army which I sent among you. The most High God says he will take care of us when the Lord returns, when we go back into our land. Okay? And he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously uh, with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Oh, praise to the most High. So the Lord says, guess what? He will take care of us once again. Okay? In the kingdom. When his son returns. When we are gathered up and taken back to our homeland. All right? So... Let's go back to Leviticus. Okay, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Once again, I'm almost done. Leviticus 23 and verse... Leviticus 23 and verse 14. One more again. And he shall eat neither bread nor parched corn. Okay? No green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So what we're reading here is particularly regarding the parish corn because we would store the food um, and the most I will bless the food that was stored so that even the next year we'll still be able to eat it even during the feast. There's three main feasts that the Lord is talking about, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Food, and the Feast of Ingathering. During the time when we're observing the Feast of Pentecost, guess what? We would still be enjoying the old corn. During the time we will observe after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the after the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we would still be eating old corn or parched corn because we were distorted the year before. Okay? So, um, I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? I'm going to end the class right there. Um, let's break break. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? Um, that's the Feast of Pentecost um, this day. Uh, but we will go into the spiritual understanding of it um, next time, Lord will, so that brothers and sisters can understand what it actually means spiritually for us this day, as we are in the lens of our captivity, spiritually what it means, all right? But we must understand the basics first before we can understand the deeper mysteries thereof, all right? Okay, uh, we're going to break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not descending the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Oh, praise. Oh, praise to the Most High. Oh, praise to the Most High God. Oh, praise to the Lord.